very warm welcome to Christ Church for our service of morning prayer. So glad that you have joined us. Uh, this is the fourth Sunday service for the fourth Sunday of Easter, May the 3rd. And please join now as we sing our opening hymn, I Come With Joy to Meet Our Lord. joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free. In awe and wonder to recall His light laid down for me. I come with Christians far. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We continue now on page 80 of our prayer books. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen, alleluia. We continue now with the Christ our Passover, uh, which is printed in your bulletin and found on page 83 of your prayer books. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. 
but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall be made, all shall be made alive. Alleluia. Our service continues with the psalm and the lessons. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The first reading is from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse when he suffered. He did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you are going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel of John. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voices of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ever since I can remember, I've always had this, this bit of a dream of being a pig or a sheep farmer. And despite the fact that I literally now have 
the most white collar profession there is, it's still a dream that persists in some form or another. Something about the romantic and the peaceful image that I've painted for myself just continues to persist and won't go away. So a couple of years ago, I ordered a book called The Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks. It's a sort of memoir about his life as a shepherd in northern England in the Lake District, where he raises a heritage breed of sheep. And he does so in this place that looks literally like the set of The Lord of the Rings. It's just beyond beautiful. Just an absolute dream. Every part of the idea of his life. And so I ordered this beautiful book thinking, who knows, maybe it'll take my dream and push it over the edge and into reality. Or maybe I'll just have this really nice coffee table book that I can leave out when people come over and it can help cultivate this desired image that I have of being someone who can say, yeah, I'm pretty into sheep farming, no big deal. I'm basically Virginia's Wendell Berry, in case you were wondering. Of course, uh, all of that's ridiculous, but so I ordered this book and finally it arrived in the mail. And it came through the mail slot through our front door and of course, our dog Jack was there to receive the book. And it turns out that Jack is not a sheep dog or he doesn't like books about uh, sheeps. Uh, and so this is what I did to this beautiful book. It's still pretty. Still see some pictures, and thankfully I can still read it, but um, I read this book, and um, this torn up book, and it just the whole experience of it reminded me that things don't always turn out as they plan, or they don't seem, uh, or the truth of the matter is not um, what we once thought it was, and you read this fantastic book, it's a beautiful book, um, and one of the things that it does a great job of reminding you about is that even the most beautiful and seemingly ideal lives are lives of blood, sweat, and tears. And that even the Lake District of England can feel like a valley of death. These valleys of death, of anxiety and fear and suffering, they're everywhere. And this present coronavirus moment certainly feels like a valley of death for many of us. But the words of Psalm 23, which is our psalm appointed for this Sunday, and its place is one of the most widely known passages throughout all of Scripture, it reminds us that we're not passing through our first valley of death. And sadly, this probably won't be our last either. But... What we're reminded of and shown and given in this psalm, and the fact that it's the one psalm that any, everyone seems to remember, in this psalm we're given the promise, or the many promises, that this valley of death, that this suffering is not something that we do alone, and that it isn't a valley that's so dark that light and mercy and even joy can't shine through. Sigmund Freud has a fantastic psychological critique of religion that goes something like this. Freud said that the faith of Moses rests on a God who's always asking more of Israel than Israel can give. So there's a perpetual cycle of demand, failure, guilt, and sacrifice. And demand and failure and guilt and sacrifice. This sounds pretty dark, and Freud certainly intended it to sound dark, but I think it also sounds about right. The key word here, though, for us to consider is the word sacrifice. Who's doing the sacrifice, and what is the sacrifice? Because if all we have is the demand of the Ten Commandments, for example, if that's what our religion is based on, then at the end of the day, we're left to clean up our own failure and our own guilt all by ourselves with our own sacrifices. And if we do this, we do it in all sorts of different ways. Each and every day, we say we're going to give up this and we're not going to do that again. 
We say that we're going to make the sacrifice of changing ourselves, of changing our habits, <clears throat> changing in one way or another, so that never again will we make that mistake again. Maybe you thought you were going to spend your time in quarantine this past month, sacrificing those extra calories so you could make up for the past failures uh, and meet the demands of the mirror. But you may have thought that, but if you're like many of us, stress comes and brings its friend bourbon and ice cream most evenings, and instead of losing weight, you've put on the Corona 15, the freshman 15's cruel cousin. These self-improvement plans uh, that we have, you should see the list of house improvement plans that I have, that I have yet to begin to tackle. All of these plans, they're not actually sacrifices if we think about them. We think they might be the thing that can end the cycle and make us feel better. But they're not sacrifices. They're actually just more demands. What we need is a true sacrifice because without one, the valley of death that we're in, it feels like it's going to topple in on top of us. Well, the good news is that God does give us the Ten Commandments because God wants to show us ten good ways to live. But that's not all that God gives us. God doesn't stop after handing us a to-do list or some ambitious plan of self-improvement. God also gives us himself. And through the sacrifice of the cross, God gives us the gift of hope and joy and mercy to accompany us along life's way to shepherd us through the valleys of the shadow of death. In Psalm 23, God gives us 10 joys, 10 gifts of the gospel. Here, I'm going to list them for you. One, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Two, he leads me beside still waters. Three, he revives my soul. Four, he guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Five, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the one yesterday, the one today, the one tomorrow, I shall fear no evil for you, for God is with me. Six, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Seven, you spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Eight, you anoint my head with oil. Nine, my cup is running over. And ten, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Ten joys, ten promises of the gospel. This is good, good news, because demand, failure, guilt, this is life. It's the order of life. It's the way of life, so unfortunately at times. But thank God we have been given his true sacrifice. Thank God that our need is met not with more demand, but with grace upon grace. Thank God that while we feel like we're being cradled by the valley of the shadow of death itself, the truth is that we're being held, and that the valley we're in itself is being held, and within it all of our failure, all of our guilt, all of our fear, everything is being held in the hands of our Good Shepherd, who gives us faith and hope and joy so that we can say with confidence, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And my shepherd has laid down his life for me so that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our response to the gospel is a response of belief. And let's uh, join together now as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with Suffrages A on page 97 of your prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our service continues with the parish prayers. Let us pray together the collect for the fourth Sunday in Easter. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The parish prayers will be broken into four sections. At the end of each petition, please respond to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, with hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we confess that we do grow genuinely weary of the quiet yet choppy waters to which we have been led. We confess that we yearn for an exit to this valley of the shadow of death in which we find ourselves. Some of us are exhausted from the effort of trying to entertain and educate and feed and love children who are stuck at home. Some of us are frantic about how to hold it all together for another day, let alone another week. Some of us are just tired of being alone and of not knowing what comes next. We feel like sheep without a shepherd. Please, God, revive us in our faltering. Grant us fresh humor and forbearance. Deliver us from danger and disease. Shepherd us through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the things that we no longer take for granted. For all those essential workers who maybe we overlooked in times gone by. We give you thanks for a slow enough life that allows for, for baking and for walking and for gardening. For the bursts of creativity that keep coming from unexpected corners. For the acts of kindness and generosity we see all around us. For the time off the treadmill, we give you thanks. And yet our concerns are many and our he hearts are heavy. We pray this morning for those very beleaguered parents who ran out of ideas two weeks ago. We pray for everyone who has watched the date of their wedding or their graduation or their birthday or their long hoped for vacation or whatever it may be, they've watched that date come and go. We pray for the exhausted and the despairing, for those who've lost resources and jobs and hope. We ask that your comfort, your presence, and your peace be felt. Console all those who are grieving. 
whether the object of their grief be something large or something small. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, we pray for all those who are sick or infirm in any way. We lift up to you all those doing the hard work of health care, for nurses, doctors, technicians, custodians, EMTs, counselors, pharmacists, and all those who are caring for the well-being of our fellow humans. We pray for, for healing for those who are sick, and we pray for protection and provision for those who are doing the healing. We pray for their energy level and especially for their mental health. Shield them from every threat and grant their loved ones wisdom in how best to care for them. And those who lack people close to them, we pray that you would put people in their path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our town of Charlottesville, for our communities here, for our state of Virginia. We pray for our church, for Christ Church. We pray for our leaders, for our vestry, for our clergy, for our staff. We pray for those who are in government. Give them wisdom and prudence and courage and clarity. Increase the bonds of our common humanity, even as our distance remains. Pour out an extra measure of your patience on all your children. God, you are unbound by time. Help us to know that you are already present in the future we are hoping for or in the future we are fearing. Please be the good shepherd we know you to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let's join together in the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of your prayer book and also in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to, whom, to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world, knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please sing with us now the song, Day Spring. The words uh, will be in your bulletin. Glory fill. 
joyless as the day's return till thy mercy's beams I see till they in world lie in all that my eyes and my And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. We will see you next week for church.